जय राध माधव कुंजा बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंजा बिहारी गोपी जन्न बाल गिरीवान दी गोपी जन्न बाल गिरीवान दी जय राध माधव कुंजा बिहारे जय राध माधव कुंजा बिहारे गोपी जन्न बाल गिरीवान गोपी जन्न बाल गिरीवान सोर नंदन बजन रंजन सोर जसोर नंदन ब्रजन रंजन जमुना तीरा वन चे जामुना तेरा वाला चारे जय राध माधव कुंजा बिहार जय राध माधव कुंजाबी हारी कोपी जन्ना बाल गिरी बानो दारी कोपी जन्ना बाल गिरी बानो दारी सोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन या सोर नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जामुना तीरा वन चे तीरा जामुना तीरा वन चे जामुना तेरा वाना चारी जामुना तेरा वाना चारी जय विष्णु भाद भान महंग सुप्रभात विजय के चारे आज तक जैसे तो शिष्य मार इस डिवाइन ग्रेस द एसी बक्तुना द स्वामी सिल प्रभु पाद के अनंत गोरे वाइस तुम्हें निखिल जाए Namacharya Sila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Iskand Founder Acharya Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai Prem Sri Kahoj Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Giradhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhaktivinu Ki Jai 
Shishi Radha Krishna Gopya Samakun Radakun Giri Govadam Ki Jai Shiva Nabhanam Ki Jai Shimaya Panavidam Ki Jai Ganga Maya Ki Jai Jamuna Maya Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakti Vandi Ki Jai Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Gau Premanandi All glories to the sum of devotees all glory is some of the devotees. All glory is some of the devotees. All glory is all glory is Shishi Guru and Shri Gauranga. So today is the appearance day of Nimbarka Acharya. So we're going to be a little bit about here. Page 119. There's not much known about Nibarka Swami. We'll hear something here. Accurate biographies are difficult to find, yet authorities agree that Sri Nibarkacharya preached Krishna consciousness about 300 years before the advent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In Navadvip Dham Mahatnyam, Srila Bhakti Thakur says that Nibarka had previously worshipped Lord Shiva in Bilva Paksha, Rudradvip, Navadvip. Lord Shiva appeared before Nimbarka, instructing him to take initiation from the four Kumaras who were meditating nearby. Nimbarka received Radha Krishna Mantra and continued living in Navadvip. Following the teachings of the Sanat Kumara Samhita, he worshipped Radha and Krishna with great love. Soon Radha and Krishna appeared before Nimbarka. Then the divine couple displayed their unified form as Sri Goranga to him. Special mercy. Lord Goranga said, Nimbarka, in the future, when I begin my Sankirtan movement, I will personally preach the perfect transcendental philosophy of achincha beta beta tattva i will take the essence of the philosophies of madva ramanuja vishnu swami from you nibarga i will take two important principles one the necessity of taking shelter of Srimati radharani and two the high esteem of the Gopi's love for sri krishna lord goranga disappeared after instructing nibarga Shedding tears of ecstasy, Nambarka left Navadweep to begin his preaching mission. In Chaitanya Lila, Nambarka appeared as Keshava Kashmiri and received love of Godhead directly from Nimai Pandit. There are striking similarities between the Gaudias and the Nimbarkas. The followers of Nimbarka accept the six forms of surrender, practice the nine limbs of bhakti, and believe in the Dasamula, the ten cardinal points of Gaudiya Vaishnava, uh, Gaudiya philosophy. They also worship Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. They worship Srimati Radharani as the supreme topmost devotee, and they accept the gopis' love for Krishna is supreme. With beads, bhajans, and kirtans, the Nimbarkas chant their version of the Mahamantra, Radhe Krishna, Radhe Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Radhe Radhe, Radhe Syam, Radhe Syam, Syam Syam, Radhe Radhe. <laughs> In Vrindavan, about one mile from Govardhan, there is the village of Nimgaon, named after Nimbarkacharya, who lived there from childhood and later performed bhajan there. Many of Radha Krishna's pastime places in Vrindavan are now maintained by the Nimbarka sect. In Mathura Vrindavan, innumerable devotees follow Nibarka's path of bhakti. The Sriji Mandir, just off of Lloyd Bazaar in Vrindavan, serves as the center of the Nimbarka Sampradaya. Nimbarka Swami, Nimbarka Jaya Ki Jaya. So now we're going to read Mashimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So this morning we read from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 8, Text Number 9. Javidar Prabhu, would you like to chant that? Okay. We are patient. Text 9. Okay, here we go. Boy, it's a long purple words. Whoa, okay. Aho Batayam Hadina Kunaka Kripana Ishwara Rata Chadana Pari Brahmana Rayena Swagana Surid Bandubya Pari Varjitaha Shadanam Chamo Basadito Mam Eva Mata Petarao Bratri Gatin Yauti Kangs Chaivo Piaya Nanyam Kanchana Veda Mai Ati Bisrab Dash Chata eva maya mudpadayanasya poshana palana prinana lalanam anusuyananushteyam shanano peksha doshi vidushya. Thank you. Aho bata. Alas. Ayam. This. Harina kunaka. The deer calf. Kripana. Helpless. Isvara Rat Chana Pari Pramana Rayena by the force of the of the rotation of the time agent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is compared to the wheel of his chariot. Svagana own kinsman. So it and friends, Bandhubya, relatives, Parivarajita, deprived of, Saranam, as shelter, Cha, and Ma, me, me, <laughs> Upasadita, having obtained, Mam, me, Eva, Alone, Mata Pitaro, father and mother, Bratur Ghatin, brothers and kinsmen, Yatikan, belonging to the herd, Cha, also, Eva, certainly, Upayaya, having gotten, Na, not, Anyam, Anyone else? Kunchana, some person. Veda, it knows. Mai, in me. Ati, very great. Vishrabha, having faith. Cha, and Ata Eva, therefore. Maya, by me. Matparayanasya. Of one who is so dependent upon me. Poshana Palana Prinana Lalanam Raising, maintaining, and petting and protecting. Onusuyuna who am without any grudge. Onusayam to be executed. Saranya, the one who has taken shelter. Upeksha, of neglecting. Doshibhusha, who knows the fault. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace. Srila Prabhupada Ki. The great king, Maharaj Bharat, began to think. Alas, this helpless young deer, by the force of time, an agent of the Supreme Personality of God, it has now lost its relatives and friends and has taken shelter of me. It does not know anyone but me, as I have become its father, mother, brother, and relatives. This deer is thinking in this way, 
and had his full faith in me. It does not know anyone but me. Therefore I should not be envious and think that for the deer my own welfare will be destroyed. I should certainly raise, protect, gratify, and fondle it. When it has taken shelter with me, how can I neglect it? Even though the deer is disturbing my spiritual life, I realize that a helpless person who has taken shelter cannot be neglected. That would be a great fault. Hmm. When a person is advanced in spiritual consciousness or Christian consciousness, he naturally becomes very sympathetic toward all living entities suffering in the material world. Naturally, such an advanced person thinks of the suffering of the people in general. However, if one does not know of the material sufferings of fallen souls and becomes sympathetic because of bodily comforts, as in the case of Bharat Maharaj, such sympathy or compassion is the cause of one's fall down, downfall. If one is actually sympathetic to fallen, suffering humanity, he should try to elevate people from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness. As far as the deer was concerned, Bharat Maharaj became very sympathetic, but he forgot that it was impossible for him to elevate a deer to spiritual consciousness. Because, after all, a deer is but an animal. It was very dangerous for Bharat Maharaj to sacrifice all his regular principles simply to take care of an animal. The principles enunciated in Bhagavad Gita should be followed. Yang hinav yat yantyate purusang purusarjava. As far as the material body is concerned, we cannot do anything for anyone. However, by the grace of Krishna, we may raise a person to spiritual consciousness if we ourselves follow the rules and regulations. If we give up our own spiritual activities and simply become concerned with the bodily comforts of others, we will fall into a dangerous position. Omigyana tamarandasya giranjana salakaya chakshvam militam jena tasmai shri gurave namaha mukram kotva chalang pangun lang hayate gurim yat kripa tadaham bande shri gurum dinataranam vanche kapa tribhyascha kripa sindhu devacha patitanam pavanevyo vaishnavevyo namo namaha jaya shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita giradhar shri asri gaur bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So Barbars, he uh, was in a little illusion. <laughs> he was thinking that it has this dawn, this this fun has full faith in me. I have to help it. So he was thinking that he had the power to help this uh, fawn. But that, as it is said, our greatest power is not the power we have over others, but the power we have over ourselves. Oh, you know that. <laughs> so, yeah. If we are able to control our senses, if we're able to control our mind, become very powerful. Just like we have devotees in this moment, very powerful because of that ability to to control uh, their senses, control their mind. Vacho vegam manasakrota vegam jiva vegam vrupasta vegam etan vegam yo visaheta dirva sarvam apimang prativing sasyasyat that one who is able to control the urge to speak, the mind's demands, Anger, tongue, belly, and genitals is qualified to make disciples all over the world. So, just being able to control one's mind, control one's senses, makes one so powerful that one can make disciples all over the world. Yeah. As Prabhupada did. He had uh, great devotion and great control over his, uh, over his senses. So he was thinking that, uh, Bharmaj was thinking that he could uh, protect this 
Stefan that he had the power. But what happened? He died. The king died, Bharat died, and the fawn, Krishna took care of it. As Krishna is taking care of everyone. So unfortunately, he didn't. Uh, he, he became too attached to this fawn. I could uh, kind of identify with this when I was about five years old. I had a, a little dog, and I was so attached to that dog. Wherever I went, it went, and we were like inseparable. And he got run over by a car, and I was just totally, it was the, my first suffering in the material world. I was devastated. <laughs> so you become very attached to these, to animals, and become very attached to relatives, you know, mother and father and siblings, become very attached. Even there's instances where devotees were very sincere and they wanted to practice Krishna consciousness. They wanted to give their life to Krishna. But they found out that their father wasn't so inclined for him to go that way. So he said, no, better you continue in school and, and uh, get a career. And because in India there's so much respect for the father, they would do it. But who's the real father? <laughs> the real father is Krishna. So they should listen to the real father. The, their material father was interested in you know, material advancement. But our real father is interested in our spiritual advancement. And therefore Krishna comes and he gives us so much uh, wonderful knowledge Transcendental knowledge. So it's amazing that uh, that Barmars, he was he was on such a high level of, of advancement, he's on the level of, of Bhav. But still, you know, Maya came to him in this form of a of a of a of a small deer, this fawn, and became completely bewildered, became completely attached. So we have something to learn here. We have a lesson to learn here. Don't be attached to anything but Krishna. <laughs> if we're attached to anything else in this world, then it's gonna be it'll be dangerous, as Prabhupada says here. It's very dangerous. Dangerous position to become attached to anything else but Krishna. And our spiritual master, yeah, devotees. Otherwise, yeah, it's very, uh, very dangerous. So he was in this uh, illusion that he was thinking that, I, that I'm a man and this is a, a fawn and I need to protect it. Yeah. He had this sympathy. And Prabhupada mentions that actually, how could he help the fawn? They can't, he can't understand spiritual life. But, in, but in the, the actual way to show sympathy, sympathy is to go to people that can understand. And Prabhupada says here, if one is actually sympathetic to fall and suffering humanity, he should try to elevate people from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness. So this is real sympathy. You know, preaching Krishna consciousness, giving Srila Prabhupada's books out to people. This is real compassion, a real sympathy. The devotee has no, no problems, but they are concerned about the suffering of people. Just like Prahlad Maharaj says, Naivod vijay paradrat jai vaitaranyas tvadvirya gaina mahamrata magna chitta so cheta to imukha cheta sa indriyartha maya sukhaya banabudva to imudha. He says, I have no anxiety which is an amazing statement. Just that one statement, he has no anxiety. His father is trying to kill him in so many ways. It's like unbelievable. You know, th you know, throwing him off a cliff and you know, throwing him in boiling oil. I wonder how he survived that one. I mean, <laughs> gee, <laughs> he just chanted Hare Krishna. You know, just, you know, throwing him under elephants, just all kinds of, I mean, just can't imagine 
had these these guys with with spears, ready to pierce him. And he was just Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare. No anxiety. It's like inconceivable. <laughs> no anxiety. But he said, I am concerned about the unfortunate souls who don't have Krishna consciousness. He said, I am concerned out of love for them. So this is, this is a devotee. Yeah. Devotee has no problem. What is our problem? We don't have any problem. Yeah. Krishna's given us prasadam. He's given us a roof over our head. He's taking care of us. Yeah. But we you should be concerned about the fallen souls. Just like we have devotees, in the, it's like this Parameshwar, he's out there eight hours a day working so hard, 780 books in one day. You know. And on, on his day off, he's driving to the next place. That's his day off. <laughs> it's amazing. I think he's about 50 years old, too. Something like that. How old do you know? How old are you? Something like that. Such a such determination, you know. compassion out of compassion. All over the world, devotees have compassion for the uh, people who don't have Krishna. And of course, Srila Prabhupada is the epitome of this compassion. I have a picture of Prabhupada when he just heard that uh, devotees were able to get into Russia and start preaching. And there's a huge smile. <laughs> Probably. He was so happy to hear that they can now go into Russia. They're, they're going, in, infiltrating you know, into Russia to preach. He was so happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So Prabhupada had compassion for everyone. And he even told you know, go to go to China. But it was, it was too dangerous at the time, so they had to go later. But he wanted everybody. There was one devotee, one Mataji, she had a dream. Prabhupada was there at the temple. And she said, Prabhupada, I had a wonderful dream last night. I dreamt that everyone in the world was chanting Hare Krishna. Imagine that. It's a good dream. Huh? What a nice dream. And Prabhupada said, oh... Very nice dream, and that is my desire. Yeah. So this is the desire to turn this this planet into Vaikuntha. If everybody becomes Krishna conscious, it becomes Vaikuntha. It's not in the material world anymore. So this is what Prabhupada wanted. So here in this verse, it's inter interesting that he was thinking that that I, I should not be envious and think for the, that for the deer my own welfare will be destroyed. Yeah. So he was thinking that if I, if I take to my spiritual life, this will be envy to the fawn. But it's actually just the opposite. Because he was harming himself, because he was harming himself, he was envious of his own self. Just like if, you, if, if two people have some disagreement, there's some some envy and there's some argument, then they, they do things to harm each other. Even to the point where like politicians, they kill each other. Yeah. So much envy for each other. Probably even tells of a story of two, two brothers that were, they had an argument and it got heated. It got to a heated argument and one of them killed the other. And then it went to court for the, the other one, you know, should he be killed? Or, and then the judge said, death penalty. And the father said, oh, please, judge, you know, I only have two sons. One's dead already. Let him live at least. Yeah. All right, let him live in prison for the rest of his life. So brothers, even brothers, you know, ready to kill each other. Envy is so terrible. So because there was this, this animosity, they wanted to harm each other. So if we want to harm ourselves... If we harm ourselves, that's envy of ourselves, and therefore this statement is there. Nirdeham adyang sulabang sudurlabam, plabam sukarpam guru karnahara, mayan loko yasin nabasavaritam, pamang bavadhin nat sreta atma. 
that I mentioned this the other day, but I didn't really touch it on, I, I touched a little bit, that the body is like a, it's a, it's a boat for crossing over the ocean of material existence. The spiritual master, he's the captain. The favorable winds are the, uh, the Vedas. Now, sometimes winds can be very dangerous. You know, therefore, Vayu, Who's the incarnation of Vayu? You know, Bhima, right? Bhima and Hanuman. You know, so they're, you know, winds destroyed, knocks down buildings and tips over ships. But there's favorable winds also that just glide you across the ocean, right? So that's the, the Vedas. They glide us, they help us across this ocean of material existence. And this verse goes on to say, which is very interesting, and if one doesn't use this human form of life for this purpose of crossing over the ocean of material existence, he's a killer of his own soul. A killer of his own soul. Of course, you can't kill the soul. <laughs> it's eternal. But one becomes so covered that practically it's, it's dead, just like so many people you know, here when we're in Pacific Beach. And people are so bewildered by the modes of nature, intoxication, and so much sensual activity, they're practically dead. Neyayat karma dharmaya nabi ragaya kalpate, netirtapana sevaya jivam apim dhoisaha. That if one's work does not bring one to dharma, if one's dharma does not bring one to was it nehiya karma dharma navi right if one's dharma does not bring one to renunciation and if one's renunciation does not bring one to devotional service then one is considered to be dead although breathing so what we have on the planet now is millions of people that are you know appears like they're living but they're actually dead the land of the living dead <laughs> it appears like they're living but they're actually they're dead because there's no spiritual awareness, no awareness of who they are. And they're just going full on in uh, sense gratification, in the illusion of sense gratification, that that will bring them happiness. So it was just the opposite. He thought he was being envious if he turned away from the fawn, but actually, he was envious because he wasn't helping himself. Yeah. Srila Prabhupada says that, that naturally one loves oneself. And therefore we, we take care of ourselves. We'll, we'll avoid any danger. We want everything best for ourselves, right? People go to good schools, right? To get a good job and so they'll have a good life, you know. Love for oneself. But where does that come from? That comes from the love for Krishna. Yeah, because of the soul within, we're part of Krishna. Therefore, there's love for the soul. We want the best for ourselves. But what is the best for the soul? This is what people don't know. Prabhupada knows. Krishna knows what is best. Father knows best. Yeah, Krishna knows best. <laughs> so he gives us this knowledge by which we can grow spiritually. It's interesting that here in the in the translation, he even says, Hare Krishna, come in, come on. <laughs> Plenty of room. He says, it's interesting here, he says, even though the deer is disturbing my spiritual life, I realize that a helpless person who has taken shelter cannot be neglected. So he knew, he realized. He knew that this deer is, is disturbing my life, my spiritual life. But still, still he continued on. So this, of course, is uh, very unfortunate for him because he had to go body of a deer 
But it's interesting that he, he remembered his past life and then he became Jud Bharat. I think next life, right? Jud Bharat. After the deer. But he wanted to play it very cautiously this time, as we'll hear. So he, he uh, acted like he was dumb and dull. Judd, you know, just dull. He acted pretty much like he was retarded. And therefore he couldn't take any responsibility. Huh? Oh yeah, he, he was looking over the cows. That was his re He couldn't do anything else. So I just, you know, protect the cows, you know. Or, or, or actually it was, uh, yeah. So, yeah, he wanted to be more cautious. So we should, this, this is something we could learn also. We be very cautious. There's a lot of danger in this world. So we should play this very, we should live this, very, this life very cautiously. We never know what's going to happen. Very dangerous material world. So, oh, one second here. Now this first sentence, Prabhupada's, it's amazing. Prabhupada's first sentence is in, in purports are just so enlivening. They could probably just have a book of Prabhupada's first sentences. <laughs> in the Bhagavatam. He says, when a person is advanced in spiritual consciousness or Krishna consciousness, he naturally becomes very sympathetic toward all living entities suffering in the material world. So this is a natural occurrence for one who is advancing in spiritual life. That this is so nice, this Krishna consciousness is so nice. It's like sometimes people ask me, why are you doing this? I said, well, you know, I got this knowledge and it's so nice. I want to share it with you. I want to give it out to you. I want, I want to, you know, it's a natural thing. You get something nice, you want to share it. And what is nicer than Krishna consciousness? You know, it's so nice, it's so valuable that this knowledge can deliver one from material existence. This is the power of this, of this knowledge. And somehow, due to some past activities, we've stumbled upon this, this very valuable knowledge you know, by which uh, we can become purified. And I was just thinking that uh, when we chant Hare Krishna, I was chanting a couple of days ago, I was thinking, wow, this, this is a, a cleansing. Yeah, this is a real cleansing program. Yeah. To say, I was thinking about this this problem we have out here with the, on the patio, all the, the dirt on the, on the nice new floor there. <laughs> so they gotta, he's got to come with a, with, a, with a scrub brush you know, and soap and a, one of these heavy-duty scrub brushes to clean it out, right? I think our Bhakta Daniel is going to do that at some point. So, uh, so this is what we're doing. When we're chanting Hare Krishna, we're, take, we're, we're scrubbing we're scrubbing the, 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 the gunk, all the garbage from the soul. So that eventually there's just a pure soul. There's no more contamination. Naturally you come to a dirty place. The material world is a very dirty place. So naturally you come to a dirty place, you're going to become dirty. Yeah. But naturally also when you come in, in contact with a clean place, yeah, such as our temples, association with the devotees, association with Krishna, we become cleansed. But we become so dirty, it's not an easy thing. It's, not, it's a big challenge. It's the biggest challenge any of us will face, is to become impure again. And therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says the, the greatest austerity of the mind is to be pure. Greatest austerity of the mind. So, fortunately we're in this, we're on this path of purification. So maybe I'll stop there. Any questions? Or comments? Devita Prabhu has a comment. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 
always erudite and enlivening class. <clears throat> um, within the, or in the history of the Hare Krishna movement, we find that sometimes, uh, I remember right here in this temple actually, in the early days when I came in the late 80s, they had a uh, Food for Life program. Food for Life. Mm -hmm. And they, had, they, were, they, were, they had a truck, Food for Life truck. It was painted nicely and everything, Food for Life. And we'd take out, uh, well, sometimes we'd make preparations. There was one or two devotees who were doing it all the time. And they would go and, and find, I forget where they would go, where, where we would, today we would find homeless people. You know, there was a place. They weren't all over the place in those days. They had one place where people who were down on their luck would gather and you could, you know, distribute prasada, food. There were other groups doing it too. And then there were, but there was always this, this kind of borderline worry. Is it, is it, is it, is it edging over into just wealth, mundane welfare work? And I always, I always thought that there's kind of a bottom line that the people should know that this is prasadam, that this is, this is spiritual food, obviously. But there should also be some, you know, something going on. The Hare Krishna mantra could be playing, there should be literature available, something that's, there, there's a spiritual element to it, aside from the fact that it's prasadam, of course. Because I think there's a danger, and we've seen history, that you can go over into this mood. The need is infinite for material welfare work. I mean, we could spend our days taking prasadam out and feeding the, feeding the homeless right on the street here. You don't even have to need a van anymore, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but is that really what we want to do? Because that, the, the element of giving Krishna consciousness and trying to uplift the soul kind of comes into the background because uh, the obvious way that you can help them is, is, is physically, you know, especially with the prasadam. So can you address some of that? Because I think we've seen that, that, uh, that the mood of materially helping others can sometimes eclipse the idea of, and there's always someone else to go on to distribute a book to who needs the book who might be more receptive rather than spending your time, your energy simply uh, helping someone to survive another day on the street, you know. This brings to, to mind there was uh, back in the 80s, mostly in the, in the 80s, some of the set, even when Prabhupada was here, devotees are doing a lot of collecting because temples needed money to maintain and overhead and everything. So there was a devotee, he was sell, we, the devotee used to sell stickers. That was a big thing. And so one person who was kind of favorable to the devotees said, uh, is this Hare Krishna? And he said, well, yeah, they believe some of the things we believe, you know. He wouldn't come out and say he's a Hare Krishna. <laughs> he had beads on, though, so she knew. He said, come on, you're Hare Krishna. Why don't you, 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 you say you're Hare Krishna? So we kind of... You know, he's thinking, that, well, it's a Gyatya Sukriti, they're doing some service. They're giving some donation. But not straightforward. Yeah. So, yeah. Now it's, oh, it's, it's night and day now compared, I mean, there used to be so much of this in, 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 the, in America. And books, books, it would just became, it wasn't even, yeah, very few books were going out. Yeah. Fortunately, in Miami, if he died under Mars, he wouldn't allow it. He would, if he saw stickers, he'd throw them away. <laughs> so we stuck to, to book distribution. Actually, my temple president, believe it or not, he actually, he wanted me to go out and sell stickers, and I refused. <laughs> he would, he, in Miami. Because he knew I'd do, I'd do good, because I'd do good with books. I'd probably do huge with stickers, but I wouldn't do it. And he was pretty upset, <laughs> but I wouldn't do it, because I was also pretty firm on, on distributing books, which Prabhupada was fond of. And actually, we had the spiritual sky, which is prashadam. We had that spiritual sky. That was a big thing, a lot of money coming in, spiritual sky. 
devotees would make the spiritual sky incense and sell it, and it, we had a whole business, a huge bit, making a lot of money. And then Prabhupada said, actually, better we distribute books. So then that stopped, and we sold it to somebody. I met the guy that owned the, the company, actually, one time. And he, yeah, he bought it, and he was doing huge still, <laughs> making a lot of money, spiritual sky incense. But Prabhupada, you know, he thought, it's nice, they're getting some prasadam, you know, some incense, but better give them Krishna, better full-on give them the, 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 the ultimate medicine, which is uh, getting knowledge of Krishna. So, yeah, prasadam distribution is actually, uh, it's, a, it's a great service. But yeah, the more they know, better. Of course, it's a gatha sikriti. They don't know. Whether they know or they know, they're getting purified. I'll tell you an interesting story that happened. Some book distributor was in North Carolina, Tulsi Dasi, one of the, she's a, one of the uh, legends in our movement of book distribution. She was distributing and she offered a cookie. To, she was, we, actually, in Miami also, we used to give out a lot of prasadam. They'd get a book and give them prasadam too. So she offered a cookie, and she said, no, no, no don't, give me a, don't give me one of them cookies. He said, why? He said, well, some of my friends, they got some of those cookies, and they went through all kinds of changes. Well, what kind of changes? Well, they, they stopped drinking, and, and they stopped doing all nonsense. And she said, well, that's good. She said, he said, well, I don't know. All right, give me a cookie. <laughs> so, see, he got a cookie and some books, and... <laughs> So that's the power of prasadam. You change people, change. You know. There was another instance where uh, there was some person who was like really, really nasty. The devotees were. In, in, this is in India. They were, they were going office to office, and and this person was really inimical. He said, he said "No, get out of here. You know, don't bother me." And, and, and he said, well, anyway, please at least take some of this prasadam. So he took it, oh, all right. And then he, he, when he got home, he gave it to his, to his wife. And somehow he left a card also. He thought, well, maybe there's some hope for this guy. So he left the card and he left the prasadam. And uh, two days later, he got a call. The devotee got a call. Oh, you're, are you still here in town? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Well, uh, come, come, uh, come to the office. Come, uh, I got to talk to you. Come, and bring prasadam. <laughs> he said, "I've had such a hard time with my wife for the past five years. I couldn't please her in any way. I gave her that prasadam, and she just went. She just loved it." He said, "Where'd you get the? Where'd you get this? Where'd you? Get? Oh, some monkey brought it to me. Oh, get more. This is fantastic." And she just loved it. Yeah. <laughs> And she, so he said, uh, do you have any more of those cookies? Give me, give me some of those cookies. I, I, this is the only way I could please my wife. <laughs> of course, he, bought, he also had, he, he, brought, he went there to sell sets. So he bought a whole set also. And finally, he pleased his wife. <laughs> Prashadam. Prabhupada said it's our, our secret weapon. Kitchen religion. So, uh, yeah, if they know. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vijay Krishna, no, how do you go? I do not want to interrupt you, Prabhu. Did you finish? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Prabhu, uh, the, uh, thank you. The, the quote from the purport is the last sentence of the purport. Quote, if we give up our own spiritual activities and simply become concerned with the bodily comforts of others, we will fall into a dangerous position, end quote. So, Prabhu, my question is related to Iskon San Diego Temple admitting uh, people in the temple as residents. Um, and not only Iskon San Diego, Iskon in general. Uh, let's imagine that a, a hungry person knocks on the door of the temple, uh, winter time, without sufficient clo clothing, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, verbal verbalizes as follows. Oh, I know that here is a missionary house. Uh, uh, I, am, I am feeling hungry. I, I have n n 
not sufficient clothing and it is very cold. So can you accept me? Can, can you give me shelter? Um, what would be the response of, of, uh, of the institution in relation to ad, uh, admitting, uh, uh, in relation to the proposition of this person who is knocking on the door? Well, we have, uh, what is, Javita, you have that, what is, you give the microphone to Javita. <laughs> We have a formula for allowing people into the temple, what to speak of living in the temple. It's called the Crest Test. You ever heard before it, Vijay Krishna? Uh, no, please uh, enlighten me. Okay. You have to be clean, respectful, sane, and sober. Clean, respectful, sane, and sober. Yeah. Crest. And we've had people come who. You have to have all four of these. One, if one of them isn't there, it's a disqualification. You can't, you know, even come into the temple. I mean, you can imagine. Just think about it. What to speak of living in the temple? So, what what it sounds like is here's a troubled person, and if they're clean, respectful, sane, and sober, and having not enough clothes on is kind of near the insanity side. I mean, it, uh, that's an extreme situation, which you usually don't find so much in America that someone can't find something to cover themselves. But let's, so let's kind of X that one off. But if, uh, if someone simply wants you know, something to eat, but they're respectful, they're willing to hear a little bit, then we may, you know, it depends on the person. You may, you may invite them in to the patio you know, sit down, take a little basadam, you know, give them a little basadam and speak to them. I mean, they could be, you know, a devotee there. But they have to be sane and sober and respectful. And so that's the criterion. We're not, we're not a, 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 mon a mundane welfare organization just to give people a place to sleep and so forth. And we've had people, you know, who try to uh, use the temple in that way. And, you know, they, they may, there's, there's, there's various gradations but once after a while, you can tell where someone is really at. And uh, for the sake, as, as Maharaj would always point out, because he's had experience with this for 50 years or more, is that for the sake of all the other residents and for sake of others who might become interested in Krishna consciousness, we have to maintain the, the standards of the temple. So, most, so there's people who are serious about inquiring about Krishna consciousness. And uh, yes, we can supply you know, room and board and so forth for that. But it's a, but it's we, we don't want to simply become a place where where because we we're, we're living it's different now we got homeless people everywhere, and they'll just why do we put the gates up? Because they'll come they'll sleep here you know and you know it, it, that's not what we're about so that's the the idea with that. Uh, we and 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 Rabida Prabhu, if I may, uh, one of the rules. Uh, goes on uh, being uh, 16 rounds. The resident is uh, is uh, requested to oh. chant daily 16 rounds. Absolutely, now. 16 rounds for a regular principal. If you're going to live here, then it's, you know that's another thing. But if you want to visit, come to the, the temple, attend the classes, uh, and we should watch out for that because mm -hmm. someone in one of my classes wandered in. He, he really wasn't suitable because the front door is broken. The little catch you can't doesn't close. And it look, you know, it looks warm. You know, came here, just sat here, and practically almost fell asleep. So we should be aware of that to maintain the standard and and um, clean, respectful, sane, and sober. Hare Krishna. <laughs> uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jyoti. Yes, Bhakta Daniel. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not too big of a question, but thank you, Vijay Prabhu. Um, it's just a simple question on understanding the different levels of consciousness, because I know there's like bhava and then there's prema. You know, it's like, what, what are the different levels? What are the different mm. levels of consciousness? Oh, bhava and prema. Well, that's, that's an area where uh, I think Javita is going to have to answer this one again. <laughs> This is uh, subtle differences. All right, so the best way to, to, to uh, a lens to look through that is this famous verse, 
two verses, I won't go through all of them, the steps from Shraddha to Prema, which is in the Bhakti Samhita Sindhu, and Prabhupada quotes all the time. It's quoted in the, in the, in the Gita in, in, a, in a purport. So basically, you start, I'll, I'll just really quick, but you, go, you start, start out with preliminary Shraddha or faith. Just like some of you are visiting here, you know, maybe for the first time, for whatever reason, there's some interest, there's some you know, uh, idea that you'll get something if you come to the Hare Krishna temple. Um, then if, if, if it, the, your, your interest is sparked, then you want to continue to associate with devotees, which is essential, sadhu sangha. And uh, if you keep associating, well, why can't I? I should do it too. So you start chanting. Then you bhajana kriya. Now that bhajana kriya uh, is producing purification and not in liberty. And somewhere along the way there, there should be initiation where you really get confirmed and you're serious about it. Then you can advance, you can connect it. And then you come to the point of nishta, which is firm faith in the process and, and more pure, not 100% purification, but high percent. And with all of that, and in, as, there's ruchi developing. And that ruchi is the first hint of love of Godhead, actually. Attraction to everything related to Krishna, some attraction to Krishna, taste and chanting and performing services. And then that, that matures into asakti, which is where you're actually becoming attraction to the Lord and the Lord's devotees and personally. Which then, it, it's described like uh, stirring a big vat of sugar, sugar juice, you know, sugar cane juice. It becomes thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and more and more concentrated. And that asakti or attraction then matures into bhava. And that means that there's always a level of, of ecstasy. It's like stai bhava. And you start to understand uh, your, more and more of your personal relationship with Krishna. The more you hear, the more purification, the more and more purification. And beyond the bhava stave is the prema. Now the prema also has different sub, I won't get into them, uh, uh, divisions. But those are, the, those are the basic steps. So we're, where are we? You know? We're doing bhajan, we're in an art and a vritti. And, we, and some of us hope to you know, get initiated and just confirm. But that's, and that's how fast that w the, the goes depends on your sincerity and your determination like that. How fast you become purified and still. Mm -hmm. Like somebody, you know, like you're describing Parameshwara. He's definitely on the Nishta platform and he's probably experiencing some, some, a lot of ruchi, you know. And, and who knows, he may be on the bottle plane. But someone who's, who's that steady for that long, like Vijay himself, Obviously, it's not just, you know, there's a lot of determination, austerity, but there's also a lot of ecstasy and ruchi and taste. You can tell just by hearing his classes. <laughs> I'm sorry? Prema is, is the highest level. But within that, there's also some, you know, gradations. Prema is pure love of God without a tinge of any uh, material motive. That's... And, it's, and, the, and the great thing is that we all have it. Lord Chaitanya teaches Sanatana Goswami is Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadhya Kamunoi. This eternal perfection of love of Godhead is not something artificial that we get from outside, but it's within ourselves. And just by practicing bhakti, beginning with hearing and chanting, the heart becomes purified and that natural love awakens. And that's why it's universal all over the world. Doesn't matter where you're born, how old you are, what your, your language is, or your ethnicity, whatever. If, if you take the process, it comes out. Thank you, Joy. Anything else? Srila Prabhupada Ki? <laughs>